Today, I'm gonna to show you how I made this awesome outdoor lounge chair. One, two, three. The frame for this chair is gonna be made from cedar two by fours. I chose cedar because this is an outdoor project and cedar is naturally resistant to water and rot. I started by trimming off this beat up end with my miter saw. And then I made all the cuts for my leg pieces. If you're interested in building this chair yourself, I have a link to the build plans in the description box below, which include a full material list and a cut list. I cut two of each of the three base pieces to make up the two legs. I used a digital protractor and lined out my angle for the first base piece. And then I cut that angle with my track saw. You could also easily use a circular saw. I continued finding all of the remaining angles for the leg pieces and then I cut them with my track saw. And again, you can also use a circular saw for this and I have plans linked down below to help you with these angles. Before I can glue up the base legs, I need to make the cuts that will join the seat back side supports. I clamped the two joining boards together and marked the angle that I wanted. To make this joint a little bit stronger and get the look I'm going for, I'm using a half lap joint. This means I'm going to remove half of the material from both of the members so they overlap and join. There are many ways to cut half laps, but I'm going to use a circular saw. I set my circular saw to the correct depth and then I clamped the two members together so I could cut them to the same width at the same time. And then I made mini passes and cut away the bulk of the material. I used a scrap piece of wood in front of where I was cutting so I had a flat surface for the bed of my circular saw to rest on. It also helps prevent tear out. You won't be left with a perfectly clean joint but a chisel will help clear any rough spots out. And you can see here how the two pieces now fit together. To avoid screws showing on these first two pieces, I'm going to screw them together from the bottom. To do this, I glued and clamped the pieces together and then drilled out a recess with a 3 8 bit. And then I screwed the two pieces together. I'm using a waterproof glue since these are outdoor chairs. I link the glue and everything else I'm using in the description box below. To join the next two boards, I used a pocket hole that will be hidden under the seat slats. And then for the last two pieces, I again recessed and screwed in from the bottom. Okay, and now we can attach the seat back side supports. I grabbed my 3 8 inch Forstner bit and drilled about a half inch into the wood. I then added wood glue, clamps, and then screwed my two pieces together. I repeated all the steps to make both sides of the chair. To fill the recesses, I'm using this 3 8 tapered plug cutter. This way I can cut plugs from the same cedar that I've built with. An alternative would be to just buy a cedar dowel. I then added some glue and I knocked in the plugs. I recommend paying attention to the orientation of the grain of the dowel. It looks best if the plug grain is running with the grain of your board. And then I sawed them flush with my flush trim saw. I repeated the steps for the other side and then I cut a back stretcher to attach the two sides together. This board will be attached using pocket holes. The front stretcher has a unique angle of 50 degrees and my table saw will only cut to 45 degrees. So my fix for this was to tilt my blade to 5 degrees and cut a small wedge off one side of a scrap board. I taped it to one side of my stretcher. This way, with the extra 5 degree slant, I can now tilt my saw blade to 45 degrees and get a 50 degree cut. It worked! With the cut made, I then added some pocket holes and glued and screwed it into place. 
The top stretcher has a simple angle, so no fancy cuts necessary. And I just repeated the process of pocket holes and glue. The seat slats for this chair are all going to be the same size. So I set up a stop block with a clamp at my miter saw station and I made a bunch of repeatable cuts. The only slat that will be different is this first one that will match the angle of the front. I trimmed the angle with the table saw but I couldn't get underneath it to screw it in. So I added glue and clamps and I just left it alone to dry overnight, which will dry plenty strong. The next day, I added pocket holes to the back of my seat slats and started adding them in. I used glue and screws and then I used an off cut for my spacer. The bottom seat slats are gonna need a center brace for extra support. I used a cedar two x four, cut the front angle, and then I set it into place. I again used the same offcut to get the depth of how far down the brace should sit. To secure the brace from the back side, I'm again going to recess screws. This time, I decided to try my pocket hole drill bit to drill the recesses. However, this bit did not make a clean cut, so for the second recess, I went back with my 3 8 Forstner bit, which made a much cleaner cut. I then pre-drilled, drove in screws, and then added more cedar plugs just like before. By the way, you don't have to recess and plug screws. I just really like the way this looks. With the center support in, I can start adding the rest of the seat slats. I continue my method of gluing and screwing them using pocket holes from underneath and a scrap wood spacer. To protect the bottom of the chair, I'm adding these rubber furniture feet. This adds general protection, but I also like the idea of propping the chair up just a tad off the ground so it doesn't sit in water when it rains. There are a couple small cracks in the wood that I want to stabilize so that they don't crack further. To do this, I like to use Starbond adhesives. For the smaller one, I'm going to use this super fast thin adhesive. It's watery thin and it's great for hairline cracks because of its ability to penetrate narrow spaces. After a couple of coats, I hit it with Starbond's accelerator, which instantly cures and dries the glue. The second crack is larger, so for this one, I'm gonna use Starbond's thick gap filler. I again hit it with the accelerator, and then I sanded both of the fills to a smooth finish. It's hard to tell on camera because the glue is crystal clear, but it has filled the cracks to be flush with the surface, and it's super strong. These cracks are now stabilized. The last thing I did before finish was to take a sander and slightly round over the sharp edge on the front of this chair. For a finish suitable for exterior use, I'm gonna use a mixture of teak oil and spar urethane. I learned about this mixture from Izzy Swan's channel. You mix 70% teak oil and 30% urethane, brush it on, leave it for about five minutes, and then wipe it off. My chairs are gonna be under a porch and not directly exposed to the elements. However, if you have outdoor furniture that's exposed to sun and rain, you might want to go with an even tougher finish. I'm pumped with how this project came out. I made two of these chairs for my outdoor patio, but they could also easily be indoor chairs. I have cushions made for my chair because my chair's width is a little wider than traditional cushion measurements. I've left the dimensions of my cushions in my written article linked down below. I've also linked some store-bought cushions that will accommodate just a slightly narrower version of this chair. If you'd like to build this project yourself, I also have downloadable PDF plans linked below. The plans are going to have a cut list, a material list, and step-by-step -step instructions for the exact chair I made or a slightly narrower version that will accommodate the store-bought cushion. You get both measurements in the plans. That is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next project.